Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. I've recently had a bunch of questions regarding my favorite way to approach suspended fish. And I feel like this has to do with the fact that the winter months are moving in and you have a lot of fish that are moving offshore, suspending, chasing bait. Uh, and they're just, you know, it's winter fishing. So I, I feel like that's why these questions are coming in. People are getting ready for the winter. So I felt like I would go ahead and talk about this but i do want to mention that there's multiple multiple different conversations here to have one where do you look for suspended fish how do you find suspended fish what baits to utilize for suspended fish you know everything is a little bit different but i will say that you know up here in the north country you get smallmouth all summer long throughout the whole year you can catch suspended fish down south spotted bass are notorious for being offshore you work in largemouth, it seems like if you catch a largemouth offshore, generally is it's a better quality fish. So all of the bass species are roaming around offshore, but a lot of this you can utilize to carry over to other species as well, whether that's walleye, striped bass, uh, white bass, a lot of the other fish are roaming around offshore because they're all out there chasing bait fish. You know, that's the whole suspended fish game is they're chasing their prey or their forage species and they go wherever the forage species goes. The problem with that is, from a tournament perspective, it's not a way I like to fish a tournament unless I know that it's the, the winning, the, you know, the only way to win the event. Uh, and what I mean by that is, those fish roam so much that you could spend three or four days in practice finding schools of fish, and in the tournament, you get there, and it's gone. There's no bait, no fish, and you're up you know, a creek at that point. In those instances, generally, I will say that if you spend an entire practice looking for suspended fish, at some point, as you rotate through your spots, you're going to find an area where they're going to, to show back up. You know, the fish tend to utilize the same areas. But if you have a big change in, like, wind direction and water temperature, it's going to be an entirely different thing. You know, those, those fish and the bait fish will just completely vanish. It's like they're ghosts. And that's why I don't like to fish them in tournaments. But I do like to fish for them. And a lot of times if you catch suspended fish, you're talking about a better quality fish and a quality of fish that just have big bellies because they're gorging on shad or whatever the forage species is that they're after. And if you can really dial it in, it is a really good way to win tournaments. It's just probably one of the most difficult things to do in fishing. So you're going to need patience. You're going to need good electronics. And you're going to need, you know, the understanding of what the forage species is doing. If you can put all that together, you can run around with this pattern. And you'll, you'll, you usually will find where some of those fish are and be able to catch them. Because they are relatively unpressured. And if they're active, it seems like you can catch everyone. If they're not active, they can be hard to trigger into biting. But that leads me into, you know, my bait choice. There's lots of different baits you can utilize to catch suspended fish. But in my opinion, the number one bait and my go-to anytime I'm chasing suspended fish is an underspin style bait. So this is a underspin. This is a Blakemore underspin, but I actually pour my own that have the same head. It's a horse head style underspin. You can get a lot of other ones that have minnow heads, but for the most part, it's a jig head with a hook with a swivel and a blade attached at the bottom. I'm a bigger fan of smaller blades. I don't want a big spinnerbait blade because that creates a lot of uh, a, a lot of pull and drag in the water, and it's harder to keep your bait down, harder to get it down deep. I'm just trying to get a little bit of flash, so I go with the smaller willow leaf blades, and I like the horse head style because it brings the blade away from the body of the bait and allows the blade to spin really freely. It still, you know, bangs off whatever plastic that you've chosen to use. But it just seems like the blade spins better to me and it runs more horizontal in the water because the, the head, you know, almost creates some, some resistance when your line is trying to pull it up. The head's almost pulling it back down. That's my uh, preferred style of head. But again, there's so many other good ones out there that, you know, a lot of guys I'm sure would rather go with a minnow style head or a bigger blade. I just personally feel like if I'm fishing deep suspended fish, 20 to 30 foot down, like, above the thermocline 
At that point, I'm looking to, to keep my bait down and I want something to stay down easier. And that's why I like the smaller blades and this head style. The bait choices, most people would say that the best bait choice to go with is just your jerk shad or fluke style bait. You know, it's a straight tail, uh, soft jerk bait is really what this is. You put it on the tail or on the back of your bait and it, it just leads to a, a really nice streamlined profile. So when you're pulling it through the water, uh, there's not much resistance from the, the bait and it gets down deep and it, you know, moves through the water real nicely and the fish seem to love it. So it's a very, very good time uh, tested uh, bait choice or the style of bait, the jerk shad and, and the zoom flukes body style. That probably is the number one style that people go with. I got to tell you though, recently I've gone a little bit more into some of the different baits that have a little bit of kicking action that I really like. And the reason for that is when I, when I fish a underspin style bait, I'm generally going with a very lightweight bait. So this is a three eighth ounce weight. And for me, I want my bait to get down there and suspend and I'm not doing much reeling. Most of the time I'm, I'm letting my bait pendulum i throw it out and let it pendulum on a relatively tight slack line and i'm letting it almost free fall back to the boat and i do that because i know roughly how much line i have out it's easier for me to keep my bait in the strike zone and i'm letting my bait you know be as natural as possible right i'm not imparting action i'm just letting it fall the blade spinning and if you have a straight tail on you're just getting a straight fall that's fine it works great we know it's proven but I've been, over the last four or five years, I've had some really good success going to baits that have uh, either a paddle tail on the end or some kicker legs. So, you know, you've got your power swimmers or your, your Kitek uh, swim baits. Those are all really good. I like the, the power swimmers because they are, uh, their tail motion kick is real tight and it's kind of the back end of the bait moves versus the Kiteks, which are more wide body swimming. Well, that wide body looks really good, but it really, really slows up the fall of this bait. And I'm not necessarily looking for that at all times. The power swimmer seems to be a really good mix of both, but they're both great baits. The, you know, I, I catch fish on both of them, but I've also started going more with some of these other ones that just have kicker legs, like this three and a half inch Berkeley deal, where you've got the new Berkeley boss scrub. You know, these are more of your grub style baits that kind of give you the best of both worlds. You've got your sleek profile, so the bait still falls good, but you get a little tail kicking motion out of you know both of these baits that don't create a ton of drag, so you can keep your bait down deep where you want it to be, but you're still getting a little bit of vibration and tail kick out of it, so it gets you a little bit more motion than what you would get with your straight-tailed worms. Those, you know, those are my tips for you guys. Like I like to slow my bait down as much as possible. Uh, once I my bait's in the strike zone, if I know there's fish swimming around that area, they're on the prey looking for, you know, looking for bait fish. And the longer my bait can be in that strike zone, the better it is. But it is really important to pay attention to your electronics. If you have forward facing sonar, that's a great way to approach suspended fish. And it's really, you know, more than anything, it helps you see where your bait is at compared to the level that the fish are at. So if the fish are in 25 feet, I like to keep my bait in like that 20 foot range. So I can retrieve it and keep it at the, at the level I want. That's one of the biggest keys to fishing suspended fish. If you're not paying attention to what depth your bait is at, you know, you're either probably going to be too high you know, above the fish or below the fish. And you don't want to be below the fish and you don't want to be too much above the fish. You want to have, you want to be within, I'd say a 10 foot range of where those fish are at. Ideally, you want to be at, you know, eye level or just above eye level. But your forward facing sonar units like the Lowrance Active Target will keep your bait in that strike range so much better than if you were just trying to count it down and, and try to figure out mentally how deep your bait's at. But that's, so those are the baits that I like to use, guys. Keep it simple. There's a reason, you know, the majority of people throw these, these style of baits when they're using underspins. It's because they work great for the technique and they catch a lot of fish. So 
We'll break down some of the, the ways I like to approach suspended fish in a later video or how I, how I find and identify suspended fish. But before you can fish for them, you need to know what baits to use. So I figured we'd start with this. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was helpful. If it was, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed it, and stay tuned for tomorrow's video.